Hey guys, it's Mrs. Jamba, and I am uh, using a screencasting uh, website that will allow me to kind of cover some of the things that we're going to be working on, our objectives for the day, assignments, things like that, and work toward posting that in a lesson plan format that you would be able to access so that if you're gone, if you're going to be gone, um, that kind of thing, um, we can kind of have a timeline of what you missed so that you're, you're able to kind of access what we've worked on in class and what the expectations um, were for that day. Um, today's learning objectives really are going to focus around uh, a couple of things, a few things. Um, one would be to navigate to the assigned worksheets in the ELA dashboard uh, website. It's been a while since we've done that, obviously. Haven't done that since before Christmas. Um, and so um, logging back in and figuring out where you're supposed to be and, and how you do that will be important to kind of refresh your memory. Um, lots of vocab today as we continue kind of delving into that can all conflicts be resolved unit, unit one in the literature book. And so um, we're going to be working on kind of setting a, a frame of understanding with some of the vocab that, that the story works with. Um, and so my expectation would be that you would be able to apply what you know about each word's definition to the vocab exercises and then really think about what those words mean so that when you go through and read the story, those really aren't gaps in your understanding. We're, we're clear that everyone knows what those words mean. Um, also, um, later uh, in the story, we're going to encounter um, some words that have the Greek root scope. And so for, for you, I'd like you to think about how words with that Greek root scope um, have some related meanings. It really has to do with what that root means and, and some of the different words that we see um, that that root showing up in. So for now I'm just gonna click out of this um, for just a little bit here and I'm going to um, take you to the Pearson uh, Realize um, interface here just to kind of give you a sense of what I see and what I think you see um, just to hopefully cut down on some of the confusion. I won't do this every time, but being that we've gone away for a break and we're, we're coming back in and trying to figure out what it is we need to do, and I suspect that you're going to see um, way more than what you need to be focusing on. Um, we're really looking at this area right here, this interactive worksheets, and I'm pointing this out to you because if I click the assign button, um, you're going to notice that um, I cannot assign one or two worksheets, which is really what we're doing today. Um, by themselves individually. My only alternative is to assign them as kind of a lump group or packet. And so um, I wanted to show you that, you know, I, I really don't have another opportunity or another alternative to, to do that in a way that would be um, just one or two. And so uh, when you open it up, it's going to look like this. There's going to be a lot of different things here, but we don't want you to do all of them, okay? So don't get to work and like complete the whole packet. Some things in the interest of time we're, we're really not going to work on. Um, so a couple of things that um, we're going to be doing here for um, the second half of the class period, and that is really working with two worksheets. One is the vocab warm-up word list, which really um, has a word list A and a word list B. Um, some of these words I think you already know, but there are some that maybe you need some review on, so it's a it's kind of a refresher. It's a quick way to make sure that you understand before you get going um, and apply this list to this um, vocab worksheet next door, which is vocab warm-up exercises. So we're working on two vocab warm-up word list. You're going to use that word list to complete the warm-up exercises worksheet that's just right next door. So a couple of things that I want you to focus on with the vocab warm-up exercises is just like when we did the close reading um, questions and answers for an hour with Abuelo, this is interactive. Um, so you'll see that there are um, boxes that you have the ability to put your cursor in and, and put an answer in. So this window is going to pop up. These little lines here really just allow you to kind of move this out of the way if it's in the way. Obviously we have a text color change here and then um, we have a um, 
uh, the size of the font. So there are two things that I really want to address here. First is uh, the color of the, the text that you're going to be inserting. I would like for you to uh, please choose blue um, today to do your answers in. Um, I found that as as we've been going through some of them, it really helps to have your text be a different color. It helps to set it apart from the text around it. Um, and maybe that's just me, my, my personal um, thing, but it's far easier to see it um, with a, a different color than it is to just go with the regular um, black text. Um, obviously, I don't want you to choose to do it in yellow. That would not be a good idea. So um, I'm going to go ahead and select blue, and hopefully it will change. There we go. And then um, also the 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 T's are for the text um, size. Um, if you were to do small, I'll just go ahead and type something so you can see it. No, I won't start singing Adele. Um, but it's it's really way too small. My old eyes can't see that, so I would appreciate it if you would choose the middle um, function, the middle text, because that stands out to me a little bit better. Um, the large T really gives you text that's way too big um, for, and it actually goes beyond the field of um, the text box, so it cuts it off. So choose the middle T if you could, that'd be great. Um, for for our um, inserting answers. So I don't really think there's anything else over here that you need to worry uh, yourself with um, this time. Um, down at the bottom, well first let's go back up to the top. Exercise A says fill in each blank in the paragraph below with an appropriate word from word list A. Use each word uh, only once. So again that goes back to the um, word list page that I, uh, you know, made you notice here the first time through. There's a word list A and word list B, so your answers for that top part are only going to come from this one section here. And then also um, going down to exercise B, um, answer the questions with complete explanations. So um, we want to make sure that these are complete sentences. So for instance, number one asks, if something is done once, is it a tradition? Um, well, your answer depends on what you know the word tradition means. Don't just tell me yes or no. You have to elaborate so that you clearly understand or that you show you clearly understand um, that you know what the word tradition means. And again, go back into um, the story and, and or go back into um, that word list page. Now there's also um, something else that I want to uh, call your attention to. This is the e-text um, and the some of the vocabulary shows up on page uh, 20 and 21. You would be able to for any of the the vocabulary that you're working on here or on the worksheet um, you would be able to access uh, information, definitions, pronunciation, things like that in the glossary. Um, these are live links that you would be able to link back to the glossary item, but then you could also click on the glossary icon here in our digital textbook and it will take you to any of the words like the word tradition um, that you're working with in on those worksheets um, that you'd be able to link back to. So um, when you are working on exercise B, just make sure that you're elaborating on your answer, similar to when we do those dry erase board activities um, that, you know, you, you have to make sure that you show you understand what the word means. So um, we are going to just uh, quickly talk about the Greek root scope. The Greek root scope means to look at or to watch, and that definition comes from the Greek word scopos, meaning to see. We've got a few languages that kind of really make a deep impact on, on our English language, and uh, Greek is one of them. And so you've seen words like microscope, endoscope, telescope, periscope, horoscope, stethoscope. Think about what those things do and how um, they're related to being able to see or watch um, because that root, that presence of that root in that word means that something or someone is able to see or watch and so really understanding what these things do. You see the word scope a lot in the medical field or in the science field um, and so those those words really uh, they 
have the ability they all relate to in some way um, being able to see or watch. So in kind of closing things off, um, I'm going to ask you to read through the vocab warm-up word list and complete the vocab warm-up exercises worksheet. If you're a B-Day class, which is Monday today, um, the year due date is on Wednesday. If you're an A-Day class, your due date is on Thursday. The first half of this class period featured the Wordly Wise Unit 4 exercises, which were assigned. Um, so Unit 4, A through D, again, same due dates um, there. So that will do it for our first screencast. I'm going to, you know, try to apply this a little bit more um, throughout our um, weeks, our coming weeks. I'll try not to say um so much, which I seem to be aware that I'm doing, but uh, I would like to try to see if maybe this makes an impact on, especially if you're if you're gone, that you have another place that you could go to look up what we've done, what you need to do, when is it due, that kind of thing. So thanks. Give me a little bit of feedback on what you think.